Welcome to another edition of the UAS Weekly News Update. And this week, I want to talk about four different topics. The first one is Amazon that won a patent for drone home surveillance technology. The second one is going to be DJI that strikes back at rumors of data collection. Then we'll talk about the opposition of the proposed uh, ULC, ULC tort law relating to Drone Act. And then finally, we'll talk about Lance that is going to be available for hobbyists coming in late July. This is very exciting. So let's jump right into it. The first one is Amazon that won a patent for drone home surveillance. Now you're going to say home surveillance with drones. This is like... Uh, this is like very futuristic, right? This is science fiction. Well, not really. Uh, the patent was awarded earlier this week to Amazon and the technology is still in, in, in its infancy. And uh, the program, Amazon says it's still brand new. They really haven't done a whole lot with it, but they do have the patent. The idea is that they want to use the delivery drones that they have performing different uh, drone deliveries for routine check on different houses after a drone delivery has been done. Now, if you left the garage door open, if there's a broken window, if there's graffiti, if there's a fire at your house, this is something that you can hire Amazon to do. And when they're on a flight, if they're close to your house, then they'll go and head over there, do a quick surveillance, make sure that everything is okay. And if not, then you'll get alerted by text or by phone call. Now, they are working also on a technology that's gonna be geofencing, that's gonna be available to only scan your house. And obviously there's privacy concerns with this. Uh, if the drone is doing a, a surveillance on the house next door to you, then you wanna make sure that your house is not included in the data that they're collecting. So uh, we talked about the, the drone delivery and the news update number two. I'll put a link in, the, in up here in that little box. So my discussion for you guys is, is this a service that you would be interested in? Would you hire Amazon to do drone surveillance on your house? And also, how would you feel if you start seeing a bunch of drones inspecting your neighbor's house, for example? And this brings also the question to me in my head to noise pollution. How much noise is this going to bring? I, bring, I, I live in a very quiet neighborhood. You hardly ever hear any kind of noises. And um, all of a sudden, there could be drones flying around in my neighbor's house. That's really not something that I'm too interested in. I mean, I love the, the drone industry, but tell me what you think in the comment section. I want to I hear what your, uh, what your thoughts are. The next topic is DJI that's striking back at rumors of data collection. Now you may have seen this in the news or in uh, on Facebook or on any forum that you uh, that you follow where um, DJI is being accused of collecting data and sending it back straight to China. Now there was a letter that they wrote to the Senate committee on drone security that discusses basically drone use and drone technology. Now DJI in that letter, and I'll put a link in the description so you can read the letter yourself. It's about four or five pages long. And they basically said that they do not share any flight logs, any photos, any videos, unless the drone pilot chooses to share those flight logs and those photos and those videos. And also what they're saying is that there is no automatic data that is being sent, or there is no data that is automatically being sent to China or anywhere else for that matter. Another thing that it mentioned in there is that they do not automatically transmit photos or videos over the internet. And finally, the last thing, the last key point that they make is that unlike some other technology companies, DJI actually does not sell or monetize based on their consumer data. So I thought that was very interesting. They're striking back um, at all the rumors. You guys have heard of Huawei and, and the, the, the company that supposedly is uh, spying on some of the data and sending it back to the, to the Chinese government. Another thing that they mentioned in the letter is the fact that if the U.S. drone pilot decides to actually share their data, it actually goes to a U.S. cloud server, not directly to China. And they also mentioned that they are part of a program, it's called a bug bounty program, where they're sharing the, the code for their uh, software and that uh, researchers can actually identify security issues in their software. So they're being very transparent with their data. Now, in addition to this letter, what they did this week is they released a new program called the DJI Government Edition Drone System. Now, in that drone system, basically what's going to happen is that the drone is not going to be connected or the controller connected to the internet during the flight, which means that all the data stays in the drone and there's no access to the internet at all during that time. This also means that there is no DJI activation. If you've gone through the DJI activation process, before you fly the drone, you have to activate your drone. In this case, that would not be the case. 
States. Now, I'm going to put links again in the description where you can see and visit the page and, and make an opinion for yourself. Uh, please share what, what you think about this. What do you think about the data sharing rumors? Is this something that you're worried about as a professional, as a hobbyist? And um, do you have government contracts maybe at the moment? And is this something that you've been uh, prevented from doing because you're flying a DJI drone? And do you think that new technology is actually going to help you with uh, getting th this kind of contract, government contract? I want to talk about the ULC tort law. I want to give you a quick update. Now, we have created several videos for this. Uh, I talked about this with Sarah Nelson that was here as a guest. Uh, we talked about tort law. We talked about the ULC in itself. We did a whole complete video. And last week, we actually, I actually reported that there was a group, a US, a U.S. industry group that came together and basically said that they were in favor of the latest update. Now, if you remember, the latest update was basically the ULC was trying to block the first uh, uh, block of airspace from, from the ground all the way to 200 feet. And that would belong to the landowner. And as a, as a result, if you wanted to fly in that area, you would need to get approval from the landowner first. Now, the latest update, get rid of that zero to 200 limitation. So the industry is pretty happy about this. But as you can expect, the opposite side, the landowner side, is not really all that excited about it. So uh, there's two groups that have uh, published letters that are going against the proposed regulation. And um, first one is called Jaburpa. Uh, I'll put the, the description right here underneath me. And then the other one is going to be the RPTE. Now, these two groups have letters that basically said that they're uh, opposed to the, the proposed update. Now, I'm, I'm going to try to uh, get Sarah again next week to come and join me so we can talk about this again, if this is worthy and if this is a major update. Uh, the, the big point of contention at this stage, obviously, is that this these two groups want the landowners to have um, uh, ownership of the airspace above their house. Whether it's from 0 to 200, 0 to 100, it doesn't really matter. They want some kind of privacy in, in that section. Now, the, the proposed uh, version right now of the Act is supposed to be approved later this summer in Anchorage. So it'll be interesting to see what happens and, and how this evolves. And I'll keep you posted as I hear more. Uh, Sarah's been on top of this. She's been uh, keeping track of all the updates. So we'll, we'll definitely keep you guys up to date. Now, I want to know from you guys, what do you think? Is this something that you want to control as a property owner? Do you want to be in charge of the zero to X hundreds of feet in, on top of your house? And um, if you are for this, what do you think this is going to affect your future jobs if you have to fly over a house, not necessarily taking pictures of that house, but if you're doing a shot, for example, for um, a realty company and uh, doing a, a realtor shot and you have to fly over somebody else's house, uh, how is that going to pan out? So these are all very good questions. I think the, the discussion is not over with the tort law and we'll see where this evolves and where this goes. And, uh, and hopefully this will be in favor of our industry and uh, we'll keep you updated. The last thing I want to talk about today is Lance for Hobbyist is finally going to be available in late July. Now, if you remember Lance, late May, the FAA has said that hobbyists now have to receive authorization prior to flying in controlled airspace. Well, I have a whole video about this. Again, I'll put the link up here. But essentially what, what the FAA is saying is that in order to fly in controlled airspace, which is Bravo, Charlie, Delta, or Class Echo starting on the ground, all these classes of airspace have, uh, you have to get approval from the controlling agency. And the only way you can do this at the moment is submitting a request via Lance or via the FAA Drone Zone website. Again, I have a video on, on this for remote pilots. When I hear more from the FAA, I will create a video to explain how this works uh, for you guys as a hobbyist. But the good news is, as of July 23rd of 2019, uh, Lance will be available to hobbyists. And the way that you'll do this is you'll go to a Lance provider. It's going to be an app or a website where you can request approval to fly. Now, there's currently uh, four different providers that I'm aware of that will do this for you. Uh, UA Sidekick is one of them. That would probably be my, my preferred uh, um, uh, method at the moment, along with Skyward. Skyward is only a website. A UA Sidekick is a uh, an app on your phone. And then there's also Kitty Hawk and there's also AirMap. So uh, you'll get to pick one of these providers and then you'll be able to submit, find the airspace. Uh, now there's a, a lot of uh, information in, in this. And again, we have a couple months, or actually we have about a month to get this figured out and how you're going to submit these 
uh, approval. Again, I'll make a video explaining in detail how you can do it. Uh, in the meantime, you can look in the description. I'm going to put a link uh, to the list of airports that are part of Lance. So you can see if the airport around you is going to be available in Lance. And if it is, guess what? You'll be able to get approval immediately to fly in controlled airspace, which is great. Uh, I think this is a great step forward for the FAA. This should be enhancing safety. And uh, I think it's just going to give us a lot of really good data to figure out uh, how many people are actually flying in controlled airspace. So with that being said, this is it. Um, I'll put all the links at the bottom. As always, please leave your comments, like, subscribe. I hate you say this because I hate when people say this in, in, uh, in YouTube. But if you want to get notification, please subscribe. We're actually getting close to 500 subscribers, which I'm really excited. And as always, have a great weekend and I'll see you again next week for more updates.